Jesus did not promise us a better life here, but a better life hereafter. We are not getting better, but degenerate. As science, which has never been observed, proclaims the Big Bang, which is a belief based on a faulty theory, evolution. Man made a monkey out of himself, but God did not create him that way. The Holy Bible, if you say it is a book of fables, then how do you explain fulfilled prophecy? In modern times, the nation of Israel reclaimed its property of the Holy Land, Zion, in 1948. That fulfilled Ezekiel 36, 24, and Ezekiel 46, 9 and 10. These are both prophecies prophesied thousands of years ago in the Bible. Or how do you explain the Dead Sea Qumran Scrolls, which are a word-for-word -word translation of the King James Holy Bible? Also, what about ELS, Equidistant Letter Sequencing? The impossible odds which produce encoding of names, places, and events 4,000 years before they even happen. Quite impossible without God. There are three arguments for God. One, the causal. Do you believe something caused or nothing? Did an intelligent someone create intelligent creation in his image or did nothing and which requires more faith? How do you explain the Big Bang without anything to explode also? The design argument. If you find a watch or a dictionary or a computer in the woods, could you say that the trees and the dirt over time and random chance created these marvelous inventions? I don't think so. And the moral argument. Is everyone accountable only to themselves? Everyone doing that which is right in their own eyes? Or is there an absolute law, such as the Ten Commandments, which govern us and make us accountable to a holy God? The law of cause and effect states, without cause, there is no effect. But what about God? God caused God. Just like, how did Jesus raise from the dead? Because he is God and cannot die, that is how. You can either accept it or reject it, but the only way out of death is by him who conquered death, Jesus. You can put your faith in the lies of the world, but only Jesus, the truth, will save you from going to a devil's hell. Salvation by Jesus is personal, but it is a matter of personal responsibility, not personal privacy. Matthew 10, 32 and 33 says, he who confesses me before men will I confess before my Father in heaven, and he who denies me before men will I deny before my Father. No other religion besides Christianity had its founder die for anyone's sin. No other religion besides Christianity says God loves you and he meant it so much that he died for your sin. No other religion had its leader after dying heard from again. No other religion teaches salvation is earned by grace, not by human merit. Christianity teaches grace, unearned, undeserved grace of God, but you must be willing to accept a free gift. If you admit you need Jesus' forgiveness and admit you are going to hell and are a sinner, there is none righteous, no not one. Does that concern you? It should. As 1 John 1, 8 and 9 says, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Does everyone go to heaven? Good question. I would postulate just the opposite. Does anyone go to heaven? The answer is, only by Jesus Christ. Because God is holy, no one by default goes to heaven. For John 3.23 tells us, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Our good deeds do not outweigh our evil. A judge doesn't judge you for doing good things. 
No, he judges you for the evil things you've done. And the just judge can never shrug off sin and wrongdoing, saying, Well, everyone's doing it. Do you consider yourself to be a good person? Have you asked yourself, have you ever lied, saying you were out, sick, going to be at work, on time, or disobeyed and said you didn't? Does the let's not and say we did logic hold with you? God sees everything and will judge righteousness or wickedness. He cannot let sin go unpunished. If we are honest, all must admit to doing wrong, and he who keeps the whole law and stumbles in one point is guilty of all. James 2.10 Having never done anything wrong, Jesus is the only acceptable sacrifice, and God pardons whoever so believes in Jesus, so justice can be served. Everyone is going to hell by default, thanks to Adam and Eve and the sin nature we inherited. God made a way so that we would not have to go to hell. That way is Jesus, who, as only he could, sacrificed his eternal life to pay our eternal debt, and God has exalted him. You can't outlive Jesus, nor can you live without Jesus. No one is good enough to get to heaven. Each of us must admit we need Jesus, the Savior of the world. There comes my often quoted saying, Without Jesus as Savior and Lord of your life, you are going to hell. John 3, 35 and 36. He who believes Jesus has eternal life, and he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides on him. Great or small, it applies to all. Know Jesus, and you know experientially peace. Have no Jesus in your life, and you have no peace. Romans 5.1 We are justified by faith and have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Forget me, and you have lost nothing. Forget Jesus, and you have lost everything. Revelation 20.14-15 says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire, and anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. No one is guaranteed tomorrow. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, today is the day of salvation. 2 Corinthians 6.2 Pray this prayer with me. Thank you, God, for sending your son Jesus. He could only pay my debt of eternal torment in hell with his eternal life. I can't live out my sentence, but he did dying for me. I accept your pardon by his perfect sacrifice. Now I will grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus, gaining favor with God, having my name written in the Lamb's book of life. I want to see things the way God sees them, and will read my holy Bible, going to church, being accountable, as James 5.16 says, confess your faults one to another, and pray for one another, that ye may be healed. And Hebrews 10.25, do not forsake the gathering of brethren, as is the way of some, but exhorts each other as you see the day approaching. So I will go to church and learn the Bible, for faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. He who comes to God must believe he is, and he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. I am confident that he who began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, Amen. Satan trembles when he sees the weakest saint upon his knees. God is as close as a heartbeat and near as a prayer. May the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you, lift up his countenance unto you, and give you peace as you walk out your new Christian life living for Jesus Christ. God bless, and remember, I will see you later. Just believe and take Jesus at his word.